Hey everyone, I'm Nito King, and I would love to tell you what happened last time on Goblins 3, but I honestly have no idea. We played some kind of weird chess game, and we ended up in this place. Wherever the heck this place is, maybe Blount's got more information about it than I've got. Yeah, not really. Seems that we're in a room full of magic mirrors. So yeah. I suppose let's yeah. check them out. Alright, the mirror of time doesn't seem to do anything. It looks like I'm slightly fat. Yeah. And there's a mirror up on the ceiling that we can't get to. But our reflection is actually a controllable character, and we can have him look at the various things up there. I never saw myself so thin and slender. Yeah, kind of a shame. In the floppy version, he talks in the same gibberish that Blount does, but in reverse, which is neat. Then we got some stuff over on the right side of the room. It is set to ring at 12 o'clock, but time has stopped. I guess we've kind of got a goal. We need to make that clock ring. We should bring the two hands together at the top. Like he said, the controls are through that tiny hole, but we can't really get there. Maybe Reflection Blount can fit through the big one. We should bring the two hands together at the top. No, he doesn't even have anything different to say about it. I've been kind of avoiding the obvious demon in the room. It's the old devil that sleeps in each one of us. We must wake it up. Alright, I don't know how we propose to do that, but we'll figure it out. There's not a whole lot of interest here, except for this egg over on the far left side. Do you know which came first, the egg or the chicken? Absolutely, but I don't have time to go into that right now. We've got another magic mirror over here, and this one is the key to everything. This is the exit, but he says that I'm not handsome enough. Well, that's just rude. If we go to the same mirror with the reflection blount, it now becomes the mirror of ugliness, and you can probably guess what this does. It's the exit, but he says that I'm not ugly enough. And so that's our real goal for this entire part of the game, is make regular Blount handsome and Reflection Blount ugly. And believe it or not, we'll need two different things to make those happen. So let's start by seeing if Fulbert can fit through that little hole. He cannot. How about the egg? You got a little passage at the bottom of the screen. I can't pass this object. It's only a reflection. Which we can use to pass items. Through there, I can pass reflections of objects to my reflection. But there aren't very many objects that we can pass through it. There we go. Give the egg a bit of time, and it'll hatch. It's too big to pass! Well, the hole on top is significantly bigger, so I'm sure the chick will fit through that one. Yeah. 
And now if I click on something, the reflection will automatically use the chick on it. It's not heavy enough. All right, so we need to make the chick heavier. But up here, all we've got is a thinning mirror. However, that may be just the thing for the hole down below. So now we've got a thin chick. I think taken out of context, almost everything I'm about to say sounds really sexist. Now the little hound is correctly placed. We must move the big one. And in order to do that, quite clearly we have to put the chick into the fattening mirror to make it a normal chick, and then again to make it a fat chick. And the fat chick goes to Reflection Blount and through the big hole to finally adjust both hands of the clock. the old devil is awake, what do we do with him? Well, I said that a little prematurely, but he is indeed awake. So we'll hand the fat chick back to regular Blount and see what we can do with the awakened demon. It's ugly. Not a whole lot, apparently. It's ugly. So there's not a lot left we can do here, but there is an entire other room, so let's go check it out. Yeah, for some reason in MC Escher world, Blount and Wolfie have become two different bodies. Uh, let's see what Blount makes of this first. Eh, he says Wolfie will be a help. And I suppose that he will, but there's a lot of stuff that he can't do. So let's take a look first at the window of memory that he wrote about. It says, break the glass in case of emergency. Well, it's easy enough. We still have a hammer. It says, break the glass in case of emergency. Yeah, for some reason, we can't use items on that button. But we do have Wolfie. And he's basically Bobo from the first game. He can punch things. And that's about all he can do. I don't feel like remembering things. So let's see what Blount remembers. Hey, it's Chump! It's Chump! I wonder what's new with him. Yeah, we'll see what Wolfie has to say about him. I would have made a delicious roast with it. Okay, let's move on to a different memory. It's my friend Ouya! Will I see him again one day? <laughs> Ugh, this puny thing! And moving on. Here is Colossus, the infamous one with a grain of sand in his eye. Hey, we punched the grain of sand out. Maybe he'll say something new now. No, but he'll just punch over and over. So that's all the importance that the window has, but we can see a few more memories. Poor dragon. He is still the same small size I made it. Mmm, a dragon, nice and fat. Just the right 
bite size for me. Yeah, it's a prince from the second game. This kid reminds me of something. That's me, when I was little. Just to remind you, the climactic revelation at the end of the game is that Blount was the prince from the second game. Who oh, is that kid disguised as a buffoon? Reminds me of something. Alright, so we've gotten all we can get out of our memories. The real goal in this screen is that box down below. But we can't get to it because there's a fence in the way. Something precious is hidden behind it. Yeah, we'll have to come back to that later. Meanwhile, over on the other side of the room, there's this nifty minecart. Surely that'll take us someplace exciting. Yeah, it was really useful. We've got a lever that controls where the minecart goes. It's too strong for me. And we need brute strength to move it, so of course, Wolfie comes back. They kind of stretch things to give him stuff to do. Now let's see where it takes us. And we're right back to the window. Not very useful either. But the final direction we can send the cart actually does have a purpose. It takes us to the Lake of Visions. We can't get here any other way. And Blount can't do anything with it. Wolfie, on the other hand, loves to dive into things. And suddenly we see why it's called the Lake of Vision. So let's see if we can do something with those eyes. Really, only one thing comes to mind. I feel like I'm being watched. Having had a recent eye surgery, I know all about irritation in the eyes. For some reason, that causes them to release a teardrop with a fish in it. And we can pop that with another ride on the minecart. And now we have to hurry in order to catch that fish before it floats away. And it'll take us way up here to an otherwise inaccessible ledge. There is something strange stuck in the stone. Yeah, having done all that, we can't actually do anything up here because there's a decoy stuck in the wall. There is a key at the bottom of a puddle. Doesn't look like it, but it's very deep. We can't get that either. We can't really do anything, can we? This is one of those puzzles that once you figure it out isn't too bad, but it can be kind of annoying your first time. We need to attract another fish. And break it out of the teardrop. Only Blount can break the fish out of the teardrop and still leave Wolfie time to pull the lever. But Wolfie can then ride the cart and ride the fish and get up to the decoy wedged in the wall.
And yes, now we have to get blound up to pick up the decoy. In the meantime, let's grab that key. Naturally, they wouldn't make it that easy. Wolfie can't pick up the key anyway. So with all that done, now we have to send Blount back up to the ledge to get the decoy. We can fortunately skip one minecart ride since he's right at the shore of the lake already. And it really doesn't take all that long to get back around. The characters do move pretty quickly in the screen, which is fortunate. Bit of delicate timing, but I'm pretty sure you got plenty of time as long as you don't waste it. And we finally have a dragon decoy! Let's call us a dragon! Granted, the dragon isn't here, so I'm sure it can't hear us. We'll have to go someplace where it's more likely to catch the sound of the decoy. Like that window up in the corner. Which, alas, we can't reach. We're gonna have to mess with that plant bud down at the bottom. Nothing to do with it directly, but we've been carrying this Grow Ixer ever since the Alchemist's lab. It finally gets another use. And, despite having a Bobo analog here, only Fulbert can climb up thin plants. He finally has another use, too. Nothing to do with the window directly, so let's play that decoy. And yes, our dragon pal returns. Still tiny. It's a little dragon! I'd better restore it to normal size. Well, we still got the Grow Ixer. And our dragon is back to normal. It takes us to a pile of grain. We separate the bad from the good. Yeah, I don't really know why or how to do this, but we do have a chick that should be able to eat just the good grain. The bird is not hungry enough to finish it. All right, we need a hungrier bird. Meanwhile, we've got our dragon decoy, which we can use to ask the dragon to help us in various places. And with the fence out of the way, we can finally reach the box. It's locked up! Oh, hey, I know where there's a key. And we don't even have to ride the fish to get to it. Which is fortunate. Let's see if the dragon can burn up this whole puddle. And without the water in the way, we can just pick up the key. And go unlock the box. Inside the box, we find ointment. Whatever that's for. One last thing I want to do here. Let's see what Wolfie makes of the dragon. No dragon steaks for you, buddy. So back to the Hall of Mirrors, because there's another thing that we need to do. 
And there may be a way to figure out what you're supposed to do with the pile of grain. See, there's a part of the game I haven't really looked at in a long time. This game map. We're almost to the end, only one screen after the ones we're in. It'll tell you what the objective is in any given screen, but here it just says, Get the ugliness extract from the old demon. I have no clue how that ties to what you actually need to do here. In the meantime, we need an even fatter chick. It gets big only one time. We can't make it any bigger. It won't work because this has been transformed by another mirror. We can't make it any older. So we need to reverse the fattening effect by putting it back into the thinning mirror. If I can ever Through get the re there, reflection I can to grab it. Back the objects that my original gave me. There we go. Fat chicks are surprisingly hard to click on. So with it back to normal, we can put it back into the time mirror. And if we were to put the chicken back in, it restarts the cycle. So you can't miss waking up the demon because you made the chick too old. I'll save us a step and point out that you have to make the chicken fat so that it will eat all the grain. Rat. Rat. Don't attempt this in a Legend of Zelda game. Yes, that's going to happen every time we re-enter the room. But if you know that you need to bring a fat chicken with you, you can skip it and only have to do this room once. So now, our chicken is big enough to eat all the grain. Except for one. There's a folly grain. Now, I've attempted to find whether there's an idiom about folly grain. I wasn't able to find one, so I have no idea what the connection is. But we simply need to give the folly grain to the old demon. If there's a clue to that, I'd love to know what it is. And we now have Ugliness Extract, but we're still too ugly to exit. I have to wait for my original to become handsome before becoming ugly. So, yet another simultaneity puzzle. We do have Beauty Ointment. I am rather handsome, but I can't get out without my reflection. So all you need to do is use the ointment first, and... While he's still admiring himself before the game kicks you out of this state, you put the ugliness ointment on. It's kind of weird. <laughs> and Fulbert randomly gets a girlfriend, because why not? So this is it, the final screen in the game. We got heaven over here, and hell over here. I can be your angel or your devil, yeah, I suppose. We'll find out what's going on here, and finish the game next time.